PTSD is a topic very dear to me personally. As a combat veteran deployed to the war zone in 2002 to 2003, while serving in the U.S. Air Force Medical Corps, I saw things myself that were disturbing and later treated many active duty wounded warriors, patients, many of whom were friends or colleagues that had been deployed with me. But it goes beyond that. Definitely before that, I was already a trained physician and medical specialist, a psychiatrist when I entered active duty because of the attacks on 9-11. So I had the training and had seen and treated patients with this disorder. No, I mean, growing up in East New York, Brooklyn, taught me a lot about the need for public health in general and how mental health can be affected by your surroundings in particular. How just going through your day-to-day -day on the streets of inner city New York, or anywhere else for that matter, can shape you. It cemented my desire to be a physician, a healer, but it also exposed me to a myriad of people and events, things that in hindsight with the knowledge of an experienced board certified specialist, I see the behavior for what it was in some untreated, undertreated, undiagnosed PTSD. With that said, let's dive in. First up, we're going to tackle quantum biology. And now you might be wondering, how does quantum physics relate to biology, let alone neurobiology? Well, it's a fascinating field that's just beginning to emerge. Quantum physics gives us a bunch of weird terms like quantum tunneling and quantum superposition. These are strange ideas in physics, but there is one even stranger and one of the most intriguing concepts, quantum entanglement. This is a phenomenon where particles become interconnected and no matter the distance between them, the state of one instantaneously affects the other, quasi-magical enough for Einstein to call it spooky action at a distance. Imagine this in the context of our brain. During traumatic experiences, our brain must process information almost instantaneously, and some theorists and neuroscientists have thought that quantum entanglement could be one of the mechanisms behind it. It's like our neurons are having super fast, light speed conversations, enabling us to react to trauma in real time. And if we can understand this better, we could potentially find ways to intervene and manage the neural communication, hence the trauma response. Isn't that a mind blowing concept to ponder? At first, scientists widely taught that quantum level effects could not happen in biology. Yet one of the leading founders of quantum physics, Erwin Schrodinger, Yes, the guy with the cat he put in a box, wrote a book asking the question, what is life? A small book with a big question even now. We still do not have a good definition of life, but he pondered even then, 1930, but he published the book in 1944, that quantum biology had to be a thing. Now we know he was right. From how plants capture the energy of the sun in their chloroplasts to how mitochondria in our cells capture red and infrared light transmitted through the body, how electrons tunnel and skip time space from one place to another along an electron chain in our mitochondria and ultimately provide us the energy of life. If you have been a patient of mine, the likelihood is high you have heard about these little things in our cells in the context of your neuropsychiatric symptoms and focus of treatments. Mitochondria transduce and convert the energy stored in carbs, proteins, fats, and ketone bodies into the energy needed to power you biologically. These quantum electrical effects happen 24 seven all day, all the time since before the moment we are conceived in every cell of our bodies. These little subcellular organelles respond to specific dietary changes and forms of exercise. They reproduce dynamically changing in size and number. They dynamically multiply the strong and weed out the old and weak among them. They are increasingly thought to play a significant role in cancer, metabolic diseases like diabetes and obesity, neuropsychiatric disorders like forms of depression and anxiety, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and neuroinflammatory diseases like multiple sclerosis, MS. They're now known to play a significant hub-like role in the immunity we are all born with and genetically programmed to have innate immunity and are central to how we regulate our cells by the cellular self-policing that is supposed to naturally happen, which sometimes goes wrong, and that's one of the links to cancer. Feeding, exercising, nurturing, and working with and not against these built-in power generators is critical for most disease processes and for the care and well-being of our overall health, heart, 
lungs, gut, immune system, and brain to name just a few. But they are everywhere, and everywhere are essential for proper cellular functioning and defense. So aside from the relationship of mitochondrial function to the immune system in the context of PTSD, which we will go into a bit deeper later, and its relationship to metabolism and diet, we also go deeper in a bit on this too, there have been numerous studies demonstrating that on the one hand, having a certain genetic predisposition towards PTSD can be associated to your mitochondrial DNA. Yep, we have DNA in our cell nucleus and separately in our mitochondria. And these two interact in the daily business of cellular life. All the time, frankly, it's essential to staying alive. On the other side of the equation, studies have shown specific changes to mitochondrial function as a response and at times, a maladaptation to chronic stress and PTSD. So again, taking care of these subcellular organelles is crucial to our overall health, but especially if you suffer from PTSD. Next, we delve into the neuroendocrine system. This intricate network is a true testament to the marvels of the human body. It's where our nervous system and hormone system meet and interact. Key to this interaction is the HPA axis, short for hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Under normal circumstances, the HPA axis helps us regulate our stress response, allowing us to adapt and respond to life's challenges. However, in people with post-traumatic stress disorder, this axis often becomes dysfunctional, leading to a heightened stress response and a host of related symptoms. This could be due to the fact that the intense trauma experienced disrupts the normal functioning of this axis. It's like a car's accelerator getting stuck. The result? A body that's constantly in high stress mode. Imagine the toll that takes on your body and mind. Targeting this could be a game changer in PTSD treatment. Ever heard of the fight or flight response? This is a primal reaction our bodies have to perceive danger. It's managed by our autonomic nervous system, which has two key components, the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. They work together to maintain balance, or homeostasis, in our bodies. But in individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder, this balance often goes awry. Their sympathetic system, which governs the fight-or-flight response, is frequently in overdrive. It's like being in a constant state of high alert, ready to fight off a threat that never comes. So, how can we restore balance? Enter mindfulness. Rooted in ancient Buddhist philosophy, mindfulness techniques encourage us to focus on the present moment, to breathe, to exist. This can help calm the overactive sympathetic system, promoting relaxation and balance. Mindfulness, it seems, holds a key to restoring balance. Let's not forget the immune system. It, it's not just about fighting off colds and infections. It plays a pivotal role in our overall health, even in areas you might not expect, like mental health. In fact, research shows that inflammation markers are often elevated in individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder. This suggests an intricate dance between our immune system and our mental well-being. Think about it. When you're physically sick, don't you often feel down or anxious? It's not a coincidence. Your immune system and your brain are in constant communication and when one is out of sync, it can throw the other off balance. In the case of PTSD, this could manifest as heightened inflammation, which in turn could exacerbate stress and anxiety symptoms. So keeping our immune system in check with a healthy lifestyle and possibly anti-inflammatory treatments could be key in managing PTSD. Inflammation, it seems, plays a bigger role in mental health than we thought. In the digital age, information theory offers a fresh perspective. Imagine the human brain as a complex computer, constantly processing information from our environment. Normally, this information flows smoothly, allowing us to navigate our world with ease. However, traumatic events can disrupt this flow. They act like disruptive information packets, overwhelming the system and leading to a kind of system crash. This is what we often see in PTSD symptoms, the brain struggling to process the disruptive information from the trauma. The individual might experience flashbacks, nightmares, or even physical symptoms like heart palpitations. These are all signs that the brain is stuck in a loop trying to process the traumatic event. By understanding this, we can start to see PTSD not just as a psychiatric disorder, but as an information processing problem. Understanding this could offer a new perspective on treatment. 
From an evolutionary standpoint, could PTSD symptoms be maladaptive traits that have persisted? It's a question that challenges us to look at PTSD through a different lens. To break it down, evolution is a process of change and adaptation over generations. Maladaptive traits are characteristics that were once possibly beneficial but have become harmful due to changes in environment or lifestyle. Think of it like an outdated software program without the necessary updates. Now let's apply this concept to PTSD. In prehistoric times, heightened alertness and rapid response to danger were survival skills. But in our modern world, these responses can become chronic and debilitating, leading to symptoms of PTSD. So, could these symptoms be remnants of our evolutionary past? If so, understanding this could help us develop new treatment strategies, perhaps by teaching our brains to update these maladaptive traits. Evolution, it seems, still has its mysteries. Now let's bring it all together and discuss the brain-gut connection. The human body is a complex network of systems and one of the most fascinating connections is the one between our brain and our gut. Yes, you heard it right. Your gut is often referred to as your second brain. In the context of post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, this connection becomes even more crucial. You see, when you experience a traumatic event, your brain isn't the only one reacting. Your gut responds, too, and in some patients, this can manifest as a range of uncomfortable symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and even loss of appetite. These physical manifestations of anxiety and fear can, in turn, lead to changes in your gut's microbiome. This is the community of microorganisms living in your intestines that plays a vital role in your overall health. These changes can affect behavior, self-esteem, and self-image. Moreover, poor absorption of food, nutrients, and medication can further exacerbate brain function, creating a vicious cycle of discomfort and maladaptive behavior. But here's where it gets interesting. Understanding this brain-gut connection could open doors to holistic treatments for PTSD. Imagine a treatment approach that doesn't just focus on the brain, but also addresses the gut. We're talking about therapies that involve diet changes, probiotics, and stress management techniques that can help restore a healthy gut microbiome, which in turn can improve mental health. The brain-gut connection is a relatively new field of research, and there's still so much we don't know. But one thing is clear, the more we understand about this connection, the better equipped we'll be to develop comprehensive treatments for conditions like PTSD. Who knew your gut was your second brain? But that's a wrap for today's deep dive into the system's biology of PTSD. We've journeyed from the quantum realm, understanding the role of quantum entanglement in neural communication, to the intricacies of the neuroendocrine system, specifically the HPA axis. We've also explored the delicate balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems, and the potential of mindfulness in restoring this equilibrium. We've considered the immune system's role in mental health, with a focus on managing inflammation in neuropsychiatric illnesses. We've looked at information theory's fresh perspective on traumatic events as disruptive information packets. We've even delved into the evolutionary perspective on PTSD symptoms as being built into the system, so you're not broken in any way, but explicitly functioning as designed. Just now, millions of years of evolution later, in our modern society, these effects and changes, these evolutionary adaptations, can be potentially maladaptive traits, Lastly, we've tied everything together by discussing the brain-gut connection, a crucial link that could open doors to more comprehensive treatments for PTSD. Remember to try a keto-leaning Mediterranean diet, stay active, keep learning, and care for your mind and body. Think about what foods you are eating, when you are eating them, and in what quantities. Get data. Leverage the fact you live in the 21st century and use wearable devices and others that can capture the data you need Track your calories, macro, and micronutrient intake with various apps that are out there for all varieties of smartphones. Track your menses and correlate it to your mood, sleep, anxiety, and eating habits. Sleep data from a ring or watch or pad under your mattress, or better yet, all three for higher resolution of data, digital scales that measure body fat and skin conductance, digital blood pressure cuff, continuous glucose monitoring, Certainly something to consider even if you are not a diabetic, but especially if you are or are close to becoming one. 
measure your gut microbiome several different ways with various kits or tests that are out there. Lastly, visit my website for information on all these things at themindandbodydoc.com and check out the links below. Review my other informative videos and leave a comment below. The links are affiliate links and are there to help provide for the making of these and even more videos. I'm also looking to get some discount codes for my viewers and patients, so look out for those in future videos. Ask any questions and leave constructive comments. Ask me anything. Until next time, this has been Desi, Dr. Desiderio Pina, the mind and body doc asking that you stay curious and healthy and above all else, be happy.